For more on Apple, let's bring in Gene Munster of Deepwater Asset Management. Gene, great to have you with us as always. And so I'm wondering, you know, it's been it's been a while since we've spoken, a while since WWDC. And how are you thinking now about that upgrade cycle? Is it going to move the needle in terms of changing it from what it currently is, which I believe is 36 to 40 months, to something shorter? Are people going to want to upgrade? I mean, definitely they're going to want to upgrade. I think the panel's accurately described what the next uh, one, two, three years are going to look like. I'll put some numbers around that. Is that in the June quarter, the street's looking for about 3% growth. If China actually does well, it might be 4 so call that a percent upside. That's the near term. And then the growth goes to 4 or 5 uh, and then 7% for calendar 25. So we have this kind of accelerating growth. And the piece that I can add, Melissa, related to, you know, how to think about this cycle is that I think ultimately the growth for next year is going to be 10 percent or greater. And ultimately, if uh, that plays out, and I think Julie was talking about the margin impact, that's really important piece here. We're going to see record margins from Apple late next year. They're the only mega cap company that is scaling AI at an efficient rate in the near term. And you put those two together, I think you're going to see some nice 15, 20 percent upside to Apple earnings. And so uh, I want to uh, just focus on that cycle piece. But I think there's a much bigger story for longer term investors. And that's really what's beyond the cycle. Um, getting to our China conversation, since those are the numbers we sort of got, you know, today, Gene, that that helped the stock along. I'm wondering how you think about the China upgrade cycle there for AI, because if it's going to be a boom and a driver here in the United States and, and elsewhere in the world, uh, I would imagine Chinese consumers also want an AI-enabled product, and they're not going to get it from the iPhone, at least at this point. So how do you think about Apple continuing to lose market share, and at what point it'll be material in terms of how you think about the company's valuation? So Apple's been losing share. They discounted mm -hmm. by about 10 percent. We see an acceleration. The data was showing 40, 50 percent year over year growth for the first two months of the quarter. And so that tells me that the price elasticity is working in China. You bring up this missing piece around the large language model. Could it be Baidu? Could it be uh, another party? But they're going to fill that 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 void. They will make some announcement in the months ahead. It was deafening the silence around China related to the LLM, but they're going to uh, fill that. So I think investors can rest well knowing that that piece will be uh, put into place. And uh, the opportunity ahead of Apple over the next uh, uh, many years is so much beyond China. I'll just give one quick example of that. Mac 9 to 5 today published something about a patent that Apple has that they're working on to have cameras on AirPods. Now, you may wonder what's that all about. At the end of the day, that essentially will allow you to use computer vision. You don't have to wear glasses. This, uh, uh, some of the demos that Google showed a few weeks ago. This would be an example of another product that could be uh, really powerful beyond 26. And I think an example that the Apple story is much bigger than China. Hey, Eugene, it's Tim. And how about just giving us the dropping services revenue and, and that percentage of the segment mix for, for Apple? And what it, it's hard for me to believe that Apple intelligence or where we are in a world of AI and Apple devices that are now able to compute more, um, but obviously that this doesn't translate into software and services. What's your view? Um, does this remain static? Does this, does, you know, does this piece of the pie uh, grow proportionately? Um, because, you know, it's seemingly stalled of late. We know it's great margin. It's part of why Apple's re-rated. Where do you go with services? So if you take this uh, approach that they're going to give away, uh, if you look at just GPT, for example, in version one here, and then eventually they will charge, uh, 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 OpenAI will charge for a premium version of GPT. But if, let's say, 15% of iPhone owners upgrade to that, uh, that alone right there sets a very clear, reasonable use case for AI here. That alone would add about five to seven billion a year in operating income. And they're currently running at about 100 billion. So to put some numbers around what you're talking about, Tim, think of this as a five to seven percent. Uh, impact just around kind of this first chapter around how services can be impacted by AI.